Welcome back to the Jamesy Online YouTube channel. Today we're working on an 8.3 liter ISC Cummins cylinder head out of a trash truck for one of our local customers. Waste disposal companies typically have pretty large fleets with lots of trucks that see hours and hours of service, which also means they almost always have one broken down. These guys usually can get away with doing an in-frame overhaul kit, and while they're at it, they generally like to have the head rebuilt. To get started here, we're removing all of the valve springs and the valves, giving them the old wiggle test to feel for the guide wear as we come apart. The old valve stem seals come off as well so that we can get it down to a bare head and get it washed in our spray cabinet. I don't know for sure how many hours are on this engine, but in general on jobs like this, we're doing a complete valve job, including all new valve train components. The head had a ton of carbon built up in it, but after a few washes with some wire wheeling done in between, the head comes out looking fairly clean. The next step in the process is to remove the old valve seat inserts from the cylinder head. Using our TIG welder, we simply run the torch along the inside of the valve seat insert, and after doing this, when the seats have cooled, they shrink in diameter, making it very easy to remove them. Other options for removal include cutting the valve seat very thin with one of our seat cutters, but it takes more time and is tougher on the equipment, so the welding option is usually the best bet. The old seat inserts are then collected for scrap metal, and the seat counterbores are thoroughly cleaned to ensure that they're ready for the new seat inserts to be installed. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and check the valve guides. As expected, the valve guides do show substantial wear on the ends, with well over 2000s taper in most of them, if not more. We consider this amount of wear to be unacceptable, so the head will be getting all of the intake and exhaust valve guides replaced as well. As such, we're able to drive all of the old guides out using a piloted driver on the air hammer. The guide bores are all cleaned with a wire brush before being coated with a press fit lubricant, which the guides are also coated in to make the installation go smoothly. Before moving over to the press, we first take a rubber hammer and start the guides into their bores, ensuring that they're all started straight. We also set up a spacer to the correct guide height, which will be used as a stop on the press to get all of the guides installed to the specification. We have our shop press set up with an air operated bottle jack, which makes easy work of getting the guides installed. That being said, they do install pretty tight, which is why we opted to use the press as opposed to installing with a driver on the air hammer, as you may have seen us do in previous videos. Now that the new guides are installed, it's time to get our new seat inserts installed. The driver is guided by a pilot that sits in the valve guide, and it simply takes a few solid hits to overcome the press fit. The exhaust seats and the intake seats are different materials, so it's important not to mix up the locations. As installed, the valve guides do not have the specified valve stem clearance, so they must be finished to size, which is done using our diamond valve guide hone and a bit of honing oil in the guide and on the hone. The valve stems of our new valves have been measured, and a bore gauge set up to measure the clearance, which has a required specification of 3.1 to 4.3 thousandths of an inch. As we hone, we also check with our sturdy pilot to ensure we have a good fit for our tooling when we move on to cutting the seats. As you watch the bore gauge here, you'll see that in contrast to the old valve guides, our new guides are finished on size from top to bottom with nearly no taper. At this point in the process, we moved on to resurfacing the head, which required seven and a half thousandths to clean up the warp, which you may have seen earlier this week if you follow me on Instagram, at Jamzy Online. As usual on these diesel heads, the exhaust manifold surface was in pretty rough condition as well, so we set up the angle plates and fixtured the head to cut the exhaust manifold surface to help prevent any issues with exhaust leaks. Finally, at this point, the only machine work left was to cut all of the new seats on the Surdy valve seat machine. After getting the head fixtured on the machine and getting our tooling set, it's as simple as cutting the seats and measuring the depth of a valve to ensure that all of the valves are recessed to the correct depth. Assuming that all of the valves are the same thickness, we can cut all of the intake seats to the same depth and all of the exhaust seats to the same depth using the digital readout on the machine. The intake valves for this engine feature a 30 degree valve face, and as such we're using a 3 angle cutting insert with a 30 degree seat angle, which is 60 thousandths wide as per the specifications. On the other hand, the exhaust valves for this engine feature a 45 degree face, so a different cutter is used which features a 45 degree seat angle, which is 80 thousandths of an inch wide. The increased width helps with better heat transfer and increases the longevity of the engine, which is obviously fairly important in an application such as this. As we cut, we see our bottom angle come in, followed by the seat angle, and on the exhaust here we won't really see much of a top angle, but there is a sliver there just to ensure that we have our full seat width and we're cut to the correct depth. Despite having brand new valves, they can vary in thickness by a few thousandths of an inch, so after cutting all of the seats to our depth, it's important to double check every single seat with a valve to ensure that they're all within the proper specification of recession, 
which is between 33 and 53 thousandths of an inch below the surface in the case of this engine. Now one question that we always get is, how do you get all of the chips and shavings out of the head or block? The answer is, we clean. After all of the machine work is finished, the parts first get another wash in the spray cabinet. After the wash, they're thoroughly rinsed, meaning every single passage and bolt hole is rinsed by hand. After finishing rinsing, every single passage and bolt hole is thoroughly blown out with compressed air. When you take your time and do your job, it's really not hard to get the parts clean before you move on to assembly. As always, the valves are installed with assembly lubricant, and the top hat valve stem seals are installed to the head before moving on to installing the springs, retainers, and valve keepers. We use a pneumatic valve spring compressor which keeps the valve in place while compressing the spring and retainer in order to get the keepers into the keeper groove. Of all the tools in the shop, I would say the pneumatic spring compressor is one that is super underrated because a manual compressor would simply not be any fun on a head like this with 24 valves and stiff valve springs. And with that, I'd say this head is ready to get back to work in a trash truck near you. Be sure to like and subscribe 